Okay, today I wanted to go over how to choose a hard drive properly for your system. To start off, you're going to need to know whether your computer motherboard supports SATA or IDE. Most older computers run on IDE drives because they run at 133 MHz to 300 MHz. And most newer computers have SATA connectors and, and run SATA drives and they can run at 1.5 gigabytes per second or 3.0 gigabytes per second. In order to figure out whether you have IDE or SATA drives, you're going to need to open up your, the side of your computer and look at the hard drive. You're going to have to remove the hard drive as well. Take a look at the label. It should say ATA or SATA on it. Depending on the brand, depends how they label it. Um, before you ha uh, order any um, hard drive, you're going to need to make sure you, you, you're getting enough power from your power supply. Uh, so just double check that. And if you, and this is actually a really cool thing, I think. Um, if you're running an IDE motherboard, in other words, if the drive that you found in your computer after you took it out was IDE, then that means you, know what, you can run SATA drives on an IDE motherboard. You're just going to need to get a SATA card, plug it into an extra PCI slot if you do have one, and go from there. It'll Mostly the SATA card will come with uh, the SATA cables and the power connectors you're going to need. Um, to run the drive. Um, uh, if you like really uh, like capacity space, one terabyte and up is a really good choice. Um, I, you know, the average person only uses about 200 to 300 gigabytes of space, but it doesn't hurt to always have a lot left over because the more you have left over, the better performance you're going to get out of your system and it's just going to be lightning fast you know data transfers if you're running SATA um, and you got a 1.5 G GBPS SATA drive you'll be able to transfer one and a half gigabytes a second that's outstanding so I would recommend most people to get a hard drive update upgrade and just consider all the things I said in this video let me review them again. Make sure you know whether your motherboard has IDE or SATA. Be sure that um, you have enough power going, coming from your power supply. And another thing I didn't mention is your power supply also needs to have power connectors to be able to plug into a SATA drive or an IDE drive. For an IDE drive, you're going to need a 4-pin Molex connector. For SATA drives, it varies. Usually a 6-pin SATA cable or an 8-pin. The higher-end hard drives will run on an 8-pin. So, it is also very urgent that you get a power supply that supports um, many types of hard drives so you have more availability when you're doing upgrades. And not only that, but for graphics cards, too. I hope you learned something in this video. I do realize I was talking rather fast. It will all be written out nice and neat on a on the in the description of this video. And I'll also create a nice PDF file for you guys to view. A little manual explaining how to do all this stuff neater. See ya.